Okay, so the prompt for today's daily UI challenge is to design a user profile, and I've decided to do that on mobile, and I've decided to do that for a music app. Um, so I'm going to be doing an artist or a band profile. Okay, so here we go. The first step is to start wireframing, and I'm going to drop in a placeholder for an image here. Um, we can do like cover art or artist picture or something. We'll need the artist name. Um, we'll also, I'll center that up here. We'll also, usually there's some sort of count of who's following that artist, so we'll add that in. Um, it's less important, so we'll make it smaller. And then we'll do some navigation. We'll do about the artist, we'll do songs they've written or produced, um, and then we'll do albums that they've released as well. So let's get this lined up, distribute those and make them a little bit bigger because they're more important than the followers, but not quite as important as the artist. Um, okay, so let's indicate on here that we're going to be looking at the song screen. I think that that's probably the most commonly used screen in music apps, so um, we'll be doing that view. So we've got our song titles, uh, we've got a time duration for how long the song is, and then let's duplicate those so we can get a list going. And we'll do one more kind of halfway off the screen so it's uh, showing that the list is continuing on. And then usually in these kinds of apps that you can you can add songs to kind of your liked songs like in Spotify or just like a your preferred playlist kind of a deal. So let's add some little icons here. We'll do those stars to kind of favorite those next to each song so you can mark them as ones that you like. And then we'll turn some of those into filled in stars to note that those are the ones that we've actually added to our playlist. Center those bad boys up. And the last thing on here is to add some sort of follow link to say like, I really like this artist. Let's follow and get notifications for anything that they're doing, any activities they're doing. So let's see, where can we put that? We've got the followers count, seems like it would make sense to keep the follow button close to that, and we'll make it more of a button so that it's obvious that this is an action rather than just a detail. Differentiate that more visually so that you can tell it's an action. There we go. That feels a little funny, I like, kind of like the count centered underneath there. Let's play with this a little bit. That feels a little funky, but we'll go with it for now. Um, the last step is to be able to exit the profile, so we'll add a, an arrow up here in the top left, because that's usually where back arrows are. We don't want to break that pattern. Um, if users are used to that, we don't want to make them relearn something for a common action. Um, okay, so next step is to start skinning this thing or applying a brand. So let's pick a typeface. Go with Roboto. That is a Roboto. I never know how to say that. Oh, it's a pretty safe typeface. Nice and clean. And legible. So we'll go with that. We'll differentiate the navigation so that you can tell that those are actions or they're, they're treated differently so they're something different besides just content. So we'll make those a little heavier. Adjust the spacing, and we've got some navigation there. So let's see here. We want to, I'm going to make sure that this is centered up appropriately. Here we go. We'll tuck that follower count in a little bit more, and we'll treat it a little differently so that it's a little less. prominent. There we go. Make the artist name a little bigger since that's the first thing users are going to want to see so they know what they're looking at. Make these a little smaller since they're all caps you can usually reduce the type size there and they maintain the same hierarchy as if they were a larger type size but title cased. So let's center all of this stuff up. Starting to look pretty nice. Get, let's see what this could look like with a dark background. 
We got the dark background. Let's see if we can get the fill, go to white. Could be kind of nice. Let's see. Change the color of these and kind of bring them back a little bit so they're less prominent, not so that the user's eye doesn't go to those first and we're letting the actions stand out. All right, so we need to treat this some way so that it indicates that this is what we're looking at. Um, so in the wireframe, we just underlined it, but in order to actually apply a design to it, I think we'll probably do this kind of highlight thing where we've got a background on it. So let's see here, around the corners, let's apply a gradient. What colors do we want to use? You can kind of do this nice blue, teal. Hmm. Feels nice. We'll adjust the color there so that it's legible. Make sure that the contrast is there. Um, and then for these icons, let's introduce another color. Can maybe do a yellow, lime green kind of thing. Feels kind of nice. Let's see. Let's adjust the spacing here and give that a little bit of breathing room. Okay, and then let's get rid of that placeholder arrow and put a different one in there. Rotate that around. Now dig in that arrowhead. Let's pick another one. We'll reduce the line weight there, and then we'll left align that so all of our content is aligned on the same axis. So we've got that, and now what to do with this follow button. I bumped that over because I wasn't liking where it was, but still not sure what to do with it. Let's maybe, I'll treat this similar to the navigation, kind of create the pattern that actions have this all caps type treatment. Center that. Still feels like it's a little too prominent. It might be competing a little bit. Hmm. Let's leave it for now. I think I might actually, let's see if we can get this back to a light. Kind of a lighter theme, I guess, if you will. We'll play with that a little bit. Can't decide which one I like better. So let's do that. That green is a little light. The contrast isn't quite there, so let's up the contrast there. Maybe let's do this purple color. That way it stands out from the other color usage and users know that there's something else you can do here. We'll bump the timestamps down a little bit because the song title really is the important piece. Well, let's see here. Reduce the type size. And let's center align the icon song title and timestamp. So if we duplicate that, it's actually Let's group those, and then we'll duplicate them. All right, and then we'll distribute those so that the spacing between is even. I'll bump that navigation down a little bit so that it feels more of a unit with the song titles. Still not loving that gradient. Let's see if we can darken that a little bit. That's too drastic. Let's see. Maybe get that going linear again. And still not loving it. Let's see. Let's see if we can just bump this down a little bit. 
use the same hue but just kind of change the brightness of it. Now it's too dirty. It's got too much gray in it or black. Um, let's see. Saturation and brightness are all the way up. Let's up down the brightness. Still feels like it's a little dirty with that black getting introduced. Let's see. Maybe we try a different color. Let's go with that green. I do like that. Okay. So if we move that up, let's see if we can get an image in here. Maybe we can try to have the artist name overlap the image a little bit, introduce a gradient. So if we've got placeholder for the image, let's see here, let me go find an image. What band do we want to do? How about, let's take it back, way back. I say that, back in my day. Let's do NSYNC. That feels good, right? Let's get that sized appropriately, see if we can paste it into, no, can't do that. Okay, let's just paste it. We will get rid of that placeholder. And let's see, let's add a gradient here so that you can actually read the artist name. Turn that to white. Whoops, adding too many stops. Let's get rid of those. Get this to white. Mm, that took away the gradient. One moment. There we go. All right, move the artist name up. Let's play with this a little bit, make sure it's legible. <laughs> Gradient's a little too harsh. So let's move it back down to there, but it's not really legible. Let's move the button down so that that's easier to read. Feels like it's competing too much, so let's see if we can reduce its importance in the hierarchy here a little bit. Reduce the type size and the actual size of the button and make it an outline. And that way it feels more secondary to the navigation down below. Okay, that feels a little better. That gradient still is bugging me. I wonder if... Let's try... dark gradient up here so that that arrow is visible. Feels a little bit too much like a gradient sandwich though. Let's see here. What can we do? Let's bump these down. Let's get rid of that. Let's see. I guess we should actually put the name there. We've got NSYNC. Let's add some song titles here. Let's go with toggle the memory here. It's gonna be me. Bye bye bye. Tearing up my heart. I won't sing. Digital get down. That's a good one. And pop. And I want you back. Classic. Okay. And let's pick a few of these to say we've added to our favorites. So oh, that gradient is bugging me. Let's see, let's get rid of that and let's just make this arrow a darker stroke so it's visible. And then, let's see. What if we put the hierarchy a little bit more? I'll bump up that type size and make it a little bit lighter and then we will get rid of the gradients altogether. Let's move the image up. We're gonna have to add a mask here. Let's do this. Clipping mask. And then we'll be able to move that around. All right.
Let's see here. We'll move this down a little bit. How's that feel? I'd like to, this is feeling a little boxy, so let's see if we can add some interest with some curves here. So let's round those corners. I think I'm liking that. Okay, so let's see. Let's try to make this a dark theme as well. I think I want to see what it looks like either way. So if we go down here and pick a dark background, we'll need to invert all of the type, or most of the type, I should say. We'll make that white. And then that contrast on the button here is not quite enough, so we'll up the line weight on the border and we'll change the color to be a little lighter. We'll change the color on this as well. Uh, let's see, it feels pretty nice, but that black background, background feels a little flat, so let's add a gradient here. Do on an angle, we'll pick lighter color here. I think I like it. Uh, maybe these should up the contrast a little bit. They're blending in a little bit to the background. So let's see what color do we want to do. I can reintroduce this blue. There we go. I like it. All right, well, there we go. There we have it. Next step is to um, start composing a shot. I like both of this, these light and dark color applications, um, but I think, I think we'll keep both of them. Um, so let's see here, let's do a clipping mask on the content here for each of our mock-ups so that we can keep them together. And we can get rid of these artboards. And let's reduce the size so they fit on this artboard. And I did 1600 by 1200 so that it complies with Dribble's requests. And then round the corners on those so it feels more like the iPhone screen and add a drop shadow to give some visual interest and dimension there. If we're going to keep both, I think I want to do kind of the split screen approach. So we will do a dark background here and we will center that up and then get them on the right spot. And let's align the two together. Oops, moving both of them. We'll move those back and we'll just move the white one. Okay. And there we go. All done. Thanks for hanging out. Let's do it again soon.